Hi, my name is Madison Fitzpatrick, and today we're going to be talking about Penetanguishene Secondary School. The school closed in 2016, and as the school shut their doors, students, alumni, faculty members, and the community wanted to make sure that the memories there stayed alive. In a moment, we're going to watch a video that captured those memories perfectly, and then we're going to talk to two ladies who all made it possible. When you first come here, you're always in that stage of fear, not knowing what you're going from the elementary to the secondary school. And then after you do your school years, you gain friendships and everything else. And coming back now, you look and say, I thought it was so big, but look how small it is. It was very nice to be able to be back in here after five years of having it been closed. And uh, I was participating with the tours that we had of the school, and it was very, very good just to wander through and get some of the memories back. When I came in 1986, this school was bilingual. It offered courses in French and English. It was actually called a call secondary, Penetanguishene Secondary School. The announcements were in English and French. The yearbook was published in English and French. The staff room was full of French and English being spoken. Uh, so it was a very unique situation. We would get a large percentage of the graduating class from the neighboring Catholic elementary school coming here. And it was simply because the parents had been students here and they were quite comfortable with sending their kids here and not shipping them off to Midland very big and important role in attracting families to this area during the time the school was open. We came from Toronto in the early 70s and we were very happy to be able to be part of the Penetanguishene Secondary School. Most of the people from the town for years went to that high school. I know it's been a few years that they haven't had it, but even just having the building there makes it still kind of feel like it's part of the town. It's going to be weird to have it gone. Some of the ones that have come back to me is uh, Mr. Bayfield. He was a geography teacher. That was one of my favorite classes. Very much enjoyed my English classes. Mr. Jim Greenfield was a wonderful, wonderful teacher. Mr. Hartman was uh, sort of the most memorable one for me because uh, phys ed obviously was my favorite class and so I had him always for Jim. When you teach phys ed, it's a unique situation in that you only have to take one phys ed course in order to graduate in Ontario. So basically you were dealing with a group of students who had chosen to be in that course. I had very few disciplinary problems. The kids wanted to be there. The worst thing I could say to someone if they were stepping out of line was, you go get changed, no more today. I love being a student with Mr. Hartman. He was such an awesome teacher. He was the volleyball coach and, you know, just coached phenomenal volleyball teams and they were top offset champions and it was awesome being a student with them. So it was always good to stay on his good side because um, you didn't want to cross him. <laughs> you saw him, see him upset and it wasn't, a, it wasn't a fun thing to see. So, but yeah, he was a great teacher. I will admit that a lot of the students that I got along with well, teaching them phys ed, I probably would have been ready to wring their neck if I was teaching them math or English. We had a population in the late 70s of over 900 students, so we had three portables out the back to handle the overflow, and one of them was music. We had a very, very good music teacher, John Cool. It was a wonderful class, and we actually produced two records. So I played clarinet, and there was our senior band, junior band, and a dance band. So they participated and played throughout the years as well, but I enjoyed making the record, and I still have a copy of that. So I would say this floor here probably played a good part of my years of being my favorite part of the school. And then also the shop wing down on the, uh, I would say the northern part of the school also played a part in my favorite parts too, because that were the shops and were things I enjoyed doing. When I think about high school, I think about the gym and that's basically where I lived. That was my home. I used to eat, <laughs> eat my lunch in the change room. Like I just lived in the gym basically. We were all thrown in together from three different communities, Penetang Machine, Perkinsville and LaFontaine. So we met a lot more friends and I still have some of those friendships from grade nine. The ones that are important to you, you hold on to the ones that are, yes, we were together for a good part of our schooling years. Sometimes they fall by the wayside, but I think the biggest thing is you come cross paths somewhere in life and everything else. Down the road, maybe you haven't seen somebody for 15 years all at once, bang, you see that individual out in the community and you talk to them and just uh, remember the old days. 
It's funny, living in a small town, Ontario, how often you run into ex-students. Most of the time I can come up with the first name for sure. The ones I'm in touch with more are the ones through coaching. Those connections are very strong. Met some of my best friends in high school, some that I'm still in touch with uh, a lot. We were talking to a few of them the other day, and we're, I don't know if I should say, I guess it's too late now, it's a cat's out of the bag, but uh, I used to, <laughs> we used to sneak up and drink on the roof. <laughs> And uh, some of them were like, hey, we should go do that again for old time's sake, you know, again, it's just tearing it down shortly, so. What was happening in Simcoe County was there was huge growth in the south of Simcoe County. So they were having to produce more school classrooms and building schools in the south. However, the total population, you had to take northern Simcoe into account and we weren't growing. And so you had two schools that were under capacity and one of them was going to have to be shut down in the eyes of the uh, school board. However, the review committee actually came out and said, both schools should remain open. Then it went to a vote and the trustees said, no, we're shutting one and it's going to be PSS. So back in November of 2015, the school put out a volunteer wish list for the committee that was going to be participating in the closing of the school and the 50th anniversary of the school. So we started meeting weekly from November to the end of May and we had different groups set up. So there was the group of students who were here in the 60s throughout the 2015 and every group had its own room. So all the volunteers for each room had put together memories of that time that they were here. So in the 60s and the 70s, when we still had a local newspaper, all the papers were being collected and all the sports events and everything else were put up on collages for that specific room. So that was really, really well attended because everybody saw the pictures in the paper and all the memories of what had happened during their five years there and during that decade as well. So we had a lot of volunteers putting that together. When the school closed, it was a big uh, shock to the community now that we don't have a school in town. I don't know if that changed anybody's philosophies of should we live in Penetanguishene or should we live in Midland now because the high school's there. So the school did play a, a very big part of our community and the loss was uh, shown in the municipality when we lost our school. Uh, that school was a very, very huge part of my life. Just knowing that they're tearing it down was pretty, a little emotional. Just, you know, now that we're back living in Penetang and have kids here, I kind of saw my kids going to that school. So it was kind of, just a lot of mixed emotions. A lot of great memories here in this gymnasium. I've had enough time to process the idea that PSS is gone. That part's sad. It was a very unique school. Things evolve. There's a brand new high school in Midland at the um, Georgian Bay Secondary, and the kids from Penetang are bussed over there. From what I hear from my colleagues that uh, moved there, the school's flourishing. It's doing very well. It's interesting now too being part of the fire department and we had done a bunch of training at the school and now as the school is about to be demolished we're going in there to start working on breaking down walls and all that so that even that's going to be interesting to be part of some of the demolition of the school just going to be some weird emotions for that as well it's neat to be able to have this school be so many different parts of my life wonderful staff that i taught with amazing group of teachers the administration over the years lucky to have such a great group of students the unique part being that the size of the school allowed so many of the staff and students to interact in things outside of the classroom. And I think that's what made PSS extremely uh, successful. And when you come back to a school after being away from the school for many years after graduating in 1989, coming back here now and my role in the municipality as a facilities manager just got put into my portfolio also to watch the school until we get ready to demolish the building and everything else. It's hard to believe that I was a student of the school and now I'm part of the demolition of a former school getting ready for the future development, whatever it's going to be. I think most people won't be able to say they get to do in life, attend as a student and now as a person working for a municipality be part of the demolition process and possibly making the future plans of what this site is going to be. So that would be my kind of final remarks. This is I guess the last few thoughts I could have on the school is just want to thank the school and everybody in it. Uh, some of my most cherished memories and biggest parts of my life I equate to that school. Just leaving my mark and the school leaving its mark on me. The proper goodbye I couldn't even say to it but it's, uh, it's never going to be gone. It's always going to be part of my heart.
welcome back. We had just watched an amazing video that was created for the Penetang Secondary School that closed in 2016. And we're here with two ladies who made this possible. And um, we're here with Sherry Desjardins. Um, since 2016, she's been the Director of Recreation and Community Service for the town. And she's also a PSS alumni. And we're also here with Nicole Jackson, who is the Curator and Manager of the Penetanguishing Centennial Museum and Archives. Welcome, ladies. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for having us. Awesome. Well, we're just going to start with some questions. Um, obviously, this video is is incredible. Well done. Uh, I loved it. I've I've even shown it to you know other alumni that were uh, that have been for PSS and and they loved it as well. So, um, Sherry, we'll start with you with this question. Why was it so important to you and other people um, on the boards and stuff that uh, this video was made to memorialize the school? So that when the school closed in, in 2016, it obviously had a huge impact um, on the community to uh, lose their, um, you know, the high, one of the high schools. We have two high schools in Penetanguishene. Um, but at that time, there was a great group of volunteers that, that put together um, a, a program and a celebration to recognize the school. When the school uh, was purchased by the town, uh, knowing how the 2016 announcement um, and the closure impacted the community. We we knew that it would have you know similar impacts, um, emotional impacts on our residents as well. No, and knowing that the the building would be demolished, so we wanted to uh, somehow capture the essence of the building, um, as the 2016 um, committee had already you know captured the the school piece. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we um, capitalized on the opportunity to, to memorialize the physical space. Okay, and, and Nicole, uh, why was a video chosen uh, for this project? Do you, do you think that that was the right way to go instead of maybe like a scrapbook or something like that? Uh, for the museum in 2016, we actually were able to collect a lot of the artifacts from the building. So when it was closing, I talked to the, the principal there to make sure that a lot of the key components of that high school were kept at the museum. And uh, including all of the yearbooks from every single year <laughs> were already here at the museum. And I just felt like the one last thing that needed to be captured is what the actual building looked like. And the best way to do that would be with, in a film is to do a walk through and see exactly what it looked like before it was uh, taken down. And then also, of course, just having, you know, a video with a, a walkthrough can be a little, you know, depressing in a way. So we wanted to like tell the story of the building and what it felt like to, to the community. Okay, Sherry, as a PSS alumni, um, why did creating this video mean so much to you? Um, it's funny watching the video. I mean, I've seen it, you know, half a dozen times and it still gets me emotional. Um, we, we offered, uh, many components to our community closure program, doing the wa offering the final walkthrough to the community. Um, but the people that were filmed in the video truly captured the essence of what PSS was. Um, and I think it's nice to be able to, to go back, to be able to provide something to other alumni such as myself. Um, to, you know, you just spend 10 minutes watching this video and you're brought back to a moment in time. It's, you know, out of all of my, the different phases of your life and your educational journey, high school, for me anyway, was the most impactful um, and time and the one that I was most connected to. It was the most influential on who I am today. And so for me, it was very important to, 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 to produce that video. And I could understand just for the folks that I went to school um, there with before and after me as well, that I would assume that the same would have the same meaning for them. Now, how did you choose who was going to be in the video? Because I would assume there's a bunch of teachers, you know, post, you know, students and past students who, who might want to be in the video. How did you choose those people? 
That was really left up to Quick Escape Productions, who were the were the company that actually made this film. Um, we did have a steering advisory committee um, that was sort of a guidance for us for the whole entire project, but we gave some names to them and they were the ones that sort of chose the, the different people to be interviewed um, because they were the ones that we wanted, when we did the, the RFP for it, we asked them to create the, the video that would uh, give a sense of the school. And when I talked to him, you know, uh, the, the person, the lead person with Quick Escape, he said he only wanted four or five people to be interviewed. And I was expecting he would want 20 or 25, uh, but he only wanted um, four or five people to be interviewed. And so he really was trying to pick a different person that represented something different in the film. So you have a past teacher, a teacher who had been there for a long period of time while the school was open. And you had someone um, who represented the, um, in 2016, when they did the major closing, um, Irene Lau in the film, she was the chair of that committee. So she was very involved in that component of it. Then you have somebody who, you know, went to the school and now works for the municipality and is actually part of the whole closing project to see from their point of view. And then the, the other person was somebody who would be somebody who went to the school, left the community and came back to the get came back to start a business and in, in hopes of you know raising their family and perhaps going to that school and now and now and now can cannot go to that school so that was really up to the um to the company about who was chosen and who they went with and i you know because you can't you can't interview everybody right there's just it was open for so long and there's so many people and i know in 2016 they did a wonderful um sort of powerpoint presentation um and it really went through all of the decades and had all of the music and, and, and it, it captured every single person in that. Um, but for me, as somebody who didn't go to PSS, that one was hard for me to resonate with because I had no connection. This film, we also wanted to be for not just for PSS alumni, we wanted anybody to enjoy it. and anybody that lives in Penetang Machine or in a small town. I sent it along to people that, that none of them went to PSS either. And it's just an enjoyable sort of little film to watch about a community saying goodbye to a building. So that was the other important component of it as well. And I think the, the people that they put were very well spoken too, which was great for the film as well. Yeah, um, amazing. Um, so Sherry, is there anything, um, you know, we're talking about, there's so much that could be put into this, you know, small film. Was there anything that you thought maybe should have been included or, or it sucks that there wasn't enough time that uh, this could have been included? Is there anything that you would have liked to see in the film? I the one piece that I think the um, film videographers had intended to include was a story about a couple who met there because every high school has those uh, high school sweethearts um, and they did have that lined up and hope to capture it. Uh, but given COVID and the environment that all of this has happened in, um, the circumstances were such that they couldn't uh, go forward with the interview um, at that time. Um, so, I mean, that would be one piece of it um, that maybe would have been nice to capture that they had intended to. But honestly, I, I think for the time, they, they really did get a lot of in it. And for, and for me personally, the sports piece, the gymnasium, I mean, I work in recreation, so that really resonated for me. But they captured, you know, all, there was so much about PSS that was beyond the classroom. It was all the extracurriculars. So I loved that they you know, captured the shop and the music and the sports. They, they seem to have gotten a lot of those pieces. Um, they did a great job in, in my mind. And speaking about those pieces, Nicole, is there anything that uh, viewers might not have seen in the video that are actually in the museum? Like you were speaking about the yearbooks and stuff. Is there any other really cool uh, pieces of uh, PSS history? We, uh, we have some of the special awards um, that were given. And uh, for me, uh, a lot of the sports memorabilia was actually with the Sports Hall of Fame and Penitentiary Machine has those items. Um, but for me, it was really about a lot of the pictures um, and over the years and some of the old records. So some of the, the music department and what they made over the years, we have some of the music here. 
and uh, we have a couple of old, you know, uniforms um, over the years. I don't think we have anything from the football team. I think the Sports Hall of Fame took that as well, but uh, we have some other uniforms and badges. Somebody gave us their ring from the very first year. Um, we also have like a booklet from the from the opening of, of it, 1967. Um, so we have those things. And we did do a display in um, 2016 here as part of the closing. And maybe in the future, we might do another one. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So have you ladies received feedback from the video? Obviously, it's been um, shared multiple times. It's now airing here at Rogers TV. Um, what's the feedback like? Sherry, we'll start with you. Um, yeah, I've, I've heard, um, lots of positive feedback, um, and lots of them like emotional, like it, it tore, it, it touched to people, pulled on their heartstrings. Um, even like Nicole mentioned, folks that didn't even go to school there get caught up in, in the emotion. I have, uh, my nine-year-old, I watched it with her and she just looked at me and said, you know, I'm so sorry, mama. Like, cause, and she, cause she could feel what that meant having not even been through that high school experience. Um, but that's, you know, that's my personal experience with my family. But I think a lot of people that we've worked with and community members, um, have just nice things to say, but emotional, you know, emotional things to say. Yeah, Nicole. Yeah, I would say the same thing, very positive um, feedback and um, just the style. I mean, the company that did, that did the film, the style that they used for it was really well done. And so a lot of people commented on that. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, so it obviously sounds like uh, it got the impact that you were trying to achieve with this video. Um, would you recommend, you know, um, other companies or organizations or schools, anything that's, you know, like closing down or just wanting to memorialize something or, or make an impact? Do you suggest doing something along the lines of this? Like, did it since it's gone so well for this project? Absolutely. So it's interesting because COVID, um, with all of the restrictions and closures for our department, you know, we're running events, we're not running events, we were operating um, the rec center, we're not operating the rec center. So we tried to find a way, a meaningful way to still serve our community. And the timing was such that, you know, with, with the building and the demolition and, and things being in the news, we said, hey, let's, let's find a way to offer our community some final closure to this building. So I would, some of the other pieces of the program that we did, the video, uh, we did the walkthrough and we did uh, memorabilia. So we gave people an opportunity to request things. So people took pieces of the gym floor uh, with them, signs off the walls, uh, all kinds of the strangest thing, like pencil sharpeners, clocks, you know, all those things that would have been demolished with school um, are now in the hands of our community because of this, because of this program. The last piece we did is um, during the walkthroughs, we asked people to share ideas um, of what we could save from the building. We don't know the future of the site yet, um, but whatever's built there, we've kept some items like the bench from the principal's office, the scoreboard, uh, the center floor logo. So hopefully there'll be an opportunity to use some of those pieces to memorialize the school again in whatever is replaced there. Um, but yeah, I would highly encourage any community that's losing a building that has meant so much and served the public uh, to spend the time to, to give the community that closure. And the video was just, was the perfect way to capture that forever, right? That's something that'll live at the museum and will always be there and always be available. Nicole, any last thoughts? Well, yeah, and the same token of that, I mean, I, I was inspired to recommend a video for this project because um, I know when Oak Ridges was demolished um, up at Waypoint, I had never been in that building and I know they did a video for that building as well where you got to walk through and they did some interviews and it was a it was a way to to go inside a building that maybe you hadn't been and that's what I really liked about this project is um, maybe people that never went to that high school so they didn't do the walkthrough can watch this video and get a sense of what it looked like and the feelings you know that were connected to this high school and so yeah I would recommend it for anyone to, to do this kind of project. 
Well, ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. I mean, the video is a success. Uh, it's doing really well. I think it, it did a really good job at uh, encapsulating what PSS meant to people, uh, to the community, how great of a school it was. And uh, it's exciting to see what it's going to be uh, in the near future. You know, the demolition uh, is coming soon. So hopefully maybe we can get a video out of that as well. <laughs> <laughs> Well, ladies, thank you again so much for joining us today. And uh, we'll, we will have the video uh, posted online as well for you to see uh, if you didn't catch the beginning of the show. So again, thank you so much for joining us today. Pleasure. Thanks. Thank you.